Welcome back to the third part of tonight's Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where Sherry Houston and Carol McGiffin from Loose Women are doing better than they expected. Um, yeah. They're doing very well. Um, they're on question number seven for £50,000. Um, and they've still got that one lifeline left. Now, how are you feeling, ladies? How are you feeling? Well, it's a bit... but I'm very wet. <laughs> Do I really want to hear that? No, my hands are absolutely oh, wet. Oh, I see. Through. I think she's hot and sweaty. I yes. am, yeah. yeah. It's the nerves. Nerves all bubbling up. It's tension. <sighs> but you've got 20 grand. I know. True. So you can walk away with that. OK. Yeah. Have a look, question number seven. This is for £50,000. Friar Lawrence is featured in which Shakespeare play? Romeo and Juliet, The Merchant of Venice, The Tempest, Othello. Well, you should know this. It's not The Merchant of Venice. Right. It's not Othello. Right. And it isn't The Tempest. Oh! <laughs> Are you saying you know the answer? Because it's not <laughs> The Tempest because they're on the sea. It's not Othello, we know that. The Merchant of Venice is, you know, in the courts, it's not that. It's got to be Romeo and Juliet, for goodness sake. Right. <laughs> is that your final answer? I'm happy for you to go with it. It's my final answer. Final answer. You know, if you're wrong, you lose £19,000. Yes, I know. £20,000 you got at this moment. I know. You've just won £50,000! <laughs> Quite pleased then. Yeah! Oh. That's fantastic. Yes! Yes! Brilliant. You deserved it. Good. It's funny when you look at it and I you know. say it's horrible. God, well done. Cool. 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 Now look, that's what you've done. That is the minimum amount you leave here with. Whatever happens, you go home with Whoa, at least yes. that check for 50. Do you want to hold it, Sherry? That's not bad. No, no, no! No, no, no! no, no. I don't want to touch it. Hey? Oh. Right, you've got 50 grand. <laughs> but. Um, next question of 75,000. You might as well play it. You can't lose on this. You can't drop any money. You've got 50,000 pounds guaranteed. And you still got a 50 50. Right, Carol. Yeah. Sherry, have a look. Question number eight is for 75,000 pounds. You have got one lifeline left. Here it comes. Which future monarch was born in Pembroke Castle in 1457? Henry VII, Edward VI, Mary I, Edward I. Born in Pembroke Castle in 1457. Henry the Seventh, Edward the Sixth, Mary the First, Edward the First. It's worth 75 grand, and Carol's getting hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I haven't got The first thing oh. we do is we take 50 50. Right. Yeah, let's You're being do very that. wise now, do that suddenly. Now. Absolutely. You're absolutely right. Yeah, let's do right, that. Right, computer, take away two random wrong answers. Leave Carol and Sherry the right answer, and one remaining wrong answer. Right. Henry the Seventh, Edward the First. See, the Pembroke Castle, as far as I'm concerned, is the pub in Primrose Hill. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, he wasn't born in a pub in Primrose Hill. I know, oh, but um, my no. My mum must know this. Yeah, I know. I know. I know well, a lot of people who know this. <laughs> but we've got to guess. We've got to guess. Cause, you might as well on this yeah, one because you really can't. Um, we can't lose. lose. Six, seven. So and we'd stand, we've got a 50 50 chance of winning 75 well, what, pounds. What date's Henry VIII? That's, if you look at that, think of it logically. Well, I thought that was like 1500 ish. Henry VIII. 16th century, wasn't it? Wasn't it? <laughs> See, I'm scared to say it because it just makes me no. sound like a complete dog. Idiot, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but when I was the Edward? Edward the First. Oh, I don't know. I don't know about royalty. If you think of Henry VIII, if he was 15-something, then Henry VII, logically, would be 14-something, wouldn't he? But the Edwards, when did the Edwards...? Don't know. I think we go for Henry VII and say, you know, we've got 50,000, how lucky are we? We might as well. OK, we'll so go for Henry VII. Henry VII. Final answer. Final, final, final answer. answer. Yeah. You just want seventy five. <laughs>
This is what you've done. Oh, I don't I know, know how either. This is what you've done. Oh, that's fantastic. At this moment, you have earned, you have, you've done it the hard way, £75,000. Oh, I want to that's cry. Brilliant. Right, you've got 75 grand. That fantastic. Is, yes, fantastic. I'm here to look. Now, you've got no lifelines left. No. You are only four away from £1 million. This is question number nine. Have a look at it, see Eight. what you want to do. Which US president was a member of the Rough Riders in the 1898 war against the Spanish? Yeah. Harry S. Truman, Theodore Roosevelt, Abraham Lincoln, Herbert Hoover. Any clue? Well, it's not Truman, is it? And it's not Roosevelt. Why not? Well, I think that's too early for them. Abraham Lincoln in the Rough Riders. <laughs> <laughs> He wouldn't do that, would he? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't there, Sherry. No. Herbert Hoover. I, I haven't. I haven't got first clue. I wouldn't. I wouldn't risk it. We, we're not going to risk it because I mean, seventy-five thousand is fantastic. Yeah, I think we're going to stick with the seventy-five. We're going to stick with yeah. seventy-five. It's not bad. Money. Seriously, I know, it's, it's fantastic. It's good. Wonderful. Final answer. Yeah. Final answer. Okay, give a big hand, Carol and Sherry, go away. Seventy-five thousand pounds better. Just, just uh, before you go, what yeah. would you have gone for? Hoover. Would you? Carol? I haven't got a clue. Well, guess so what? I would have guessed, yeah, probably Hoover, Herbert Hoover, yeah. Herbert Hoover. If you said Herbert Hoover, I'd take that cheque off you, rip it to a thousand pieces, and replace it with one for fifty thousand pounds. Because that would have been wrong, because the right answer was Roosevelt. Oh. Was it? Oh, he's always. Roosevelt the Rough thought. Rider, they called him. Yeah. Oh, Roosevelt the Rough Rider. Oh, okay. All right, give him a big hand. They go away with £75,000. Well, I've got to be careful. You damage yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Cherry and Carol, £75,000. We're playing, guys. Thanks. So, Sherry and Carol skip away with a very well-earned and much-appreciated cheque for £75,000 for their two causes. And we welcome our next couple of charity fortune seekers, brothers Tim Vine and Jeremy Vine. <laughs> Right, Mrs. Vine's little boys are both hoping to win a decent amount for the Fire Services National Benevolent Fund this evening. Baby brother Tim Vine is a stand-up comedian, television presenter and comedy actor, recently seen playing the imaginatively named Tim in the sitcom Not Going Out. Tim was one of the stars of ITV's BAFTA winner The Sketch Show and entered the Guinness Book of Records in 2004 for telling the greatest number of jokes in an hour, 499, to be precise. <laughs> And big brother Jeremy is much more sensible. He joined the BBC as a journalist 20 years ago and soon became a political correspondent. After a stint as one of the main anchor hosts of Newsnight, Jeremy took over the hard-to-fill shoes of Jimmy Young on Radio 2's Lunchtime Current Affairs programme. And when you listen to some of his callers, you do wonder if both Vine brothers went into comedy. Right, <laughs> Tim and Jeremy are just 12 questions now away from £1 million for their charity. And if the Vines do get entangled along the way, they have those three ever-helpful lifelines to machete their way back on track. 50-50, phone a friend, and ask the audience. And as always, they have to agree on all their decisions, and as brothers usually fight like cat and dog, there could well be some fur flying. Right, Tim, Jeremy, lots of luck. Let's play Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? <laughs> You're right, you two. Yeah, we're shaking. Yeah, no, we're not... actually shaking in time, though, so you can't tell. Good. Right. Question number one is for £500. Here it comes. In a toolbox, what sort of implement is a Phillips? Hammer, spanner, chisel, screwdriver. I'm leaning towards D, but that may be because there's something wrong with the stool. <laughs> um, I, 
I think it may be screwdriver. I think you're right. Should we say screwdriver? Yeah. One, two, three. Ready? Screwdriver. screwdriver. Very good. Final you have 500 pounds. Okay. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, question number two is for 1,000 pounds. Which of these names also means truth? Felicity, Emily, Verity, Katie. Um, Katie's weren't particularly truthful. Emily um, doesn't mean truth. Felicity, what does Felicity mean? Emily? I think it means happiness. Or, yeah. is it? Which is a kind of truth, but not as much as possibly Verity. Are we thinking, we're thinking Verity? Verity. Verity. Mm. Final okay. Final answer. Final answer. It's the right answer. You have £1,000. <laughs> Thank you, Chris. Thank you. My pleasure. Yeah. Okay, I want to try and race you up a bit further yet before we have to go to a break. Uh, you have one thousand pounds. You still have all three lifelines untouched. It's going rather well. It, it is going well. I must say, I'm used to playing this on the DVD interactive game, so it's throwing me a bit. You're not freezing between questions. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, part of your face twitching. Well, the good thing, Tim, here is it's proper money. Right, that's true as well. Yeah. Real money. Yeah. Right, you have three lifelines. Question number three is for £2,000. Who starred in the ITV drama series At Home with the Braithwaites? Amanda Redman, Amanda Burton, Amanda Holden, Amanda Donahue. Oh, crikey. Oh, <laughs> no. I thought you'd know this. Um, Think television. Um, yeah, okay, I t I've got, I've got a, a, an inkling, so I want to hear what you think, to see if my inkling is borne out by this. Um, Amanda Holden, maybe, but then I, then I also thought Amanda Burton, so I thought perhaps between those two. And you thought one of the other two, probably, so... No, I, 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 I know. I, I, I thought know. Amanda Holden. I, I'll be honest, I don't know. I thought Amanda Holden. If we go with Holden, can you just tell me something? What do you know about the show at all? Nothing. I mean, I've seen it trailed once, and I did look at the screen, and I'm certain that I saw Amanda Holden there. <laughs> well, <laughs> really? But, like, you know, you can't, they can't go well, bad. Well, it's not bad, though, is it? If she was in the trailer for the show, she could have been in the real thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We have to decide what to do here. It is a bit of a risk saying Amanda Holden now, if you're on the basis of you... Well, not if you... I, I think an inkling isn't enough at this stage. No, OK. So because we're, we are, we're facing catastrophe if this is wrong. No, we are. We are. Um, so we're going to ask the audience, anyway. We're going to have to ask the audience, I think. Okay. Chris? Well, they, they, they know. Right, audience, this is the question. First one they needed is for £2,000. <laughs> Who starred in the ITV drama series At Home with the Braithwaites? Now, A on your keypads is Amanda Redman, B is Amanda Burton, C is Amanda Holden, D is Amanda Donoghue. All vote now. Seventy-three percent. Oh, you wonderful people! You are wonderful. Twenty. Okay. What was she doing in that trailer? That's what I was. She had obviously, she'd obviously just drifted across the screen for some reason. She was nothing to do with it. Oh, we love you. If you're, if you're right on this, thank goodness we didn't go with your inkling. Of, let's just well, go no, you, hang on. You had well, an inkling know. as well. No, 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 I think you're right, but I'm just glad that we didn't do that. But yeah, anyway. but we had two. Okay, we now know that these inklings are not to be trusted. Never. Um, <laughs> OK, Tim, shall we say? Yep. Amanda Redman um, is our final answer, final answer, Chris. You were sure it was Amanda Holden? No, I was not sure. You were? I was <laughs> sure I was not you, sure. And she was in the trailer. <laughs> I don't know what she was doing. There needs sure to be a full in the investigation of that trailer. <laughs> Uh, lucky you didn't say uh, Amanda Holden. The right answer is Amanda Redmond. You have won two thousand pounds. Thank you so much. Thank you. What a great audience. Welcome back to the fourth part of tonight's Celebrity Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, where brothers Tim and Jeremy Vine have just reached £2,000, and they've still got two lifelines left to use. You're playing for the Fire Services National Benevolent Fund. Why, why that particular cause? Well, for me, I, I did some filming recently with Panorama and met a guy called Angus Campbell, who's a fireman, 
He was on a tube one day. There's a guy standing next to him. His backpack explodes. These are the 21-7 bombers. It half exploded. It didn't go off properly. Everyone screams, panics, leaves the tube. Angus stays there, tries to get the guy under control, tells him to lie down. In the end, the tube stops, the doors open, he escapes. He's a firefighter. And I said, you know, how could you do that? Nobody else was able to. Uh -huh. And he said, it's the training. And this fund is really for firemen f and female fire officers who, who've either been injured, because a lot of them are injured in, in the course of their work, or, or have some kind of mental trauma, and they just need to get better for a while and then before they get back to work. So it's a great charity. Well, they always say that they're the ones who go running in when everybody else comes running out, That's don't right. they? Which is That's absolutely right. spot on. Yeah. OK, right. Serious business then. You've got £2,000. Question number four is for £5,000. Have a look. Tell me what you want to do. Which of these is a resort in the Rocky Mountains? Albany, Aspen, Akron, Amarillo. Uh, well, uh, I feel like I know that. I feel like I know that. I've been to Aspen, and I think that's where it is. Okay. And you, you definitely saw a mountain there. I definitely. Well, when we were driving there, in fact, no, when we, we flew, we flew in. I don't know how I got those two things mixed up, but we were, we were flying in. Are you the pilot? Is that what happened? Uh, no, <laughs> we were quite low, admittedly, but um, you're getting, we're getting a ter terrible um, updraft from the mountains. Turbulence, yeah. That's it, yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and it was, uh, it was the Rocky Mountains. We looked at them from the... Uh, this is great. Yeah. This is first-hand evidence now we've got of the answer. Yeah. But you, you, can I just check that the one you thought it was going to be was going to be the same one? I think we should say Aspen and thank you That's for that right question. Right yeah. Answer. Yeah. It's the right answer. You're £5,000. <laughs> you have 50 50. You have a phone, a friend. Question number five is for 10 grand. Which animal is known as the little gentleman in black velvet? Badger, hedgehog, mole, squirrel. Uh, so ten well, grand. <laughs> I, I've got to say, I've ne we can do a bit of um, waffling. Uh, yeah, waffle. I, I, it's, it's not just, a squirrel. Let's no, we can start it, with that. It can't be a hedgehog either. It's obviously between a badger and a mole. I and mean, I dop, I dop for a mole because it looks like a little gentleman in black velvet more than a badger does. He looks more like a little gentleman in black and white stripy velvet. <laughs> <laughs> but from a, a certain angle, the badger could like look like no. Well, okay. From a certain angle, he looks like a pajama case, but that's not the point. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear, it's the lack of certainty, isn't it? It is, but you know we can't uh, ring some one of our, our phone of friends and say no. You can't. That's someone who's been, been through university and all sorts of PhD courses and say you know who is the little gentleman in black velvet. <laughs> <laughs> wasting their time they, they expect more of us than that um, we've got we've got we've got to take some risks haven't we we've got to take some risks um, to go for it I, yeah I think I think we're gonna go mole Chris mole, mole. we're going mole <laughs> that's it final that's the right answer you have ten thousand pounds no trick question right you're right right you got ten grand you're two away from fifty thousand pounds. You still got those two lifelines. You're halfway through. Question number six is for twenty grand. Which of these vegetables is sold as a bulb? Parsnip, broccoli, spinach, fennel. <laughs> well, that's. Uh, I think it's either parsnip or fennel. But uh... okay, I don't think it's parsnip. You think it's fe okay? Well, let's... fennel is a big. It is a very. Uh, I've it's seen a it. It's thing. A, looks like a bulb. It's it? bulbous. Broccoli is not a bulb, is it? Broccoli is not. A bro it? Uh, really not. No, and it's a, a bulb of broccoli. No, I've not. Be arrested if you ask for that. No, but, and similarly with, with spinach. That's like a, it's a leaf. It's not. A, you know. So, it's if if you're sure it's not. How could, how come you're so sure it's not parsnip? I mean, I've seen parsnips. You know. Yeah, we, recently. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm just trying to work out why that means you're sure that I've seen a horse recently. Yeah. <laughs> Have our horses well, sold as bulbs? Well, I don't think so. <laughs> you could use 50-50 and get rid of two. It might help. Do you know, I think we should... I, I think, think perhaps we should do that. I think you should, what were you going to say? Just go for fennel. A bulb of fennel. You'd never buy a bulb of parsnip, would you? Or is it a bulb of broccoli? OK, well, maybe we do 50-50. Let's do 50-50, because otherwise we, okay. it could be a okay. complete if we, get to, if we get to 50 grand, we're going to be lucky. Yeah. OK, 
Computer take away two random wrong answers. Good. Leave Tim and Jeremy the right answer and one remaining wrong answer. I yes. think we should say fennel. Okay then. Fennel, fennel, fennel. Listen, what choice have we got? We're not going to phone anyone up, so we've got to go for one. And you thought it was fennel or parsnip, right? I did. And a bulb of broccoli? But a bulb is generally a layered thing. Is it like an on onion is a bulb? It's got that layer thing up to, to it, isn't oh, it? Oh, okay. You know, you've got daffodil right. bulbs, they've got that slight layer thing to them. All right, uh, we just have to do fennel. So I think we're saying fennel, and we've come to a, it's a joint brotherly thing that we've done here. It's an impasse, really. And it's, it's, sort of... it's really, we'd like to say if our mum is watching that she did a lot of cooking when we were young, as perhaps you can tell. And we wish we'd helped a bit more. Yes. <laughs> I like broccoli, actually, but that's... that's Mum <laughs> never talked about bulbs at all. No. You got £10,000, you lose 9000 if you're wrong. Yeah. It's for £20,000. Oh, gosh. Final answer. Fennel is our final answer, right? Yeah, let's do that. OK. Then. Come on, then, bring on. Good. You just won £20,000. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> When the kids have definitely gone to bed and there's no danger of anyone just popping round, we ramp things up a bit on challenge with some TMA explosion. It's on at 11pm.